which length is 50,000 years, a day that will be filled with fear. Fear will be instilled in the hearts of the mankind. To properly realize this matter, to properly realize it, we need to take a journey. In these few moments, we need to take a journey and this is a journey that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised that it will happen. And since Allah has promised, it will definitely happen. We will mention some narrations from the scholars of Islam. Scholars like Imam Ibn Kathir and the narrations that he has mentioned in his book al Bidayat wa Nihayat and Ibn al Jawzi and whatever he has mentioned in his book Bustan al Wa'idin wa Riyad al Sami'in they have given a detailed description of what is going to happen on the day of judgment and resurrection this day starts that moment that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to order Israfil to blow on the sword, on the horn. This horn, its width is the size of the heavens and the earth. The sound of the, of the horn will cause the earth to shake. The same way the boats shake from the waves of the ocean. The universe will change in that day. Everything will change in that day. The earth will crack. The oceans will be removed. The mountains will move. The heavens are going to crack and are going to change like molten copper of, or silver. On that day the demons will fly, will try to escape. But, Allah, but the angels are going to hit them in their faces and they're going to return back. That is a day that Israfil will blow on the horn and that is the day that is going to reach the worst of the mankind. Allah has described this universal change in Surah Ibrahim by saying يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهْآرِ In that day the whole cosmos will look different. In that day, the earth is going to be replaced with another earth. And the heavens are going to be replaced with other heavens. And all the creatures will come out before Allah Azza wa Jal, the one, the prevailing. When Israel, when Israfil blows on the horn for the first time, this earth will go flat from the impact and from the force of the sound that will be produced by the horn. And everything will die. Everything was on the heavens and the earth will die except for, except for four angels. On that day, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to ask Malak al-Maut, 
the angel of death. Ya Malak, Ya Malak al Maut, man baqi. O angel of death, who is left? Who is still alive? And Allah Azza wa Jal properly knows who is still alive, who was still alive. So Malak al Maut will say, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, you are the all knowing. Ya Allah, you are the all knowing. It's left Israel, Mikael, Jibrail, and your weak servant, Malakul Maut, whose soul is terrified from whatever I am seeing now. Allah Azza wa Jal will tell him, go and take the soul of Jibreel. Ya Malak al Maut, go and take the soul of Jibreel. So Malak al Maut, the angel of death, will go to Jibreel and he will find him in Ruku' and Sujood. So he will tell him, Ya Miskin, what made you be distracted from this moment? Can't you see that Allah Azza wa Jal? has caused all the creatures to die. All the dwellers of heaven and earth have died. So now I'm here to take your soul. When Jibreel alayhi salam listens to this, he will say, Ya Allah, Hawwin alayya sakarat al maut Make the stupor the agony of death is on me. La ilaha illallah. An angel that has never displeased Allah Azza wa Jal since the day he was created is going to ask from Allah Azza wa Jal to make the agony of death and the pain of death easy on him. What should we say? How should we ask Allah Azza wa Jal? So the angel of death embraces Jibreel alayhi salam and then Jibreel's body will fall down lifeless. Then Allah Azza wa Jal asks Malak al Maut, Ya Malak al Maut, man baqi? O angel of death, who's left? And the angel of death will tell him, Sayyidi wa Mawlai, you are the all-knowing. Mikael is left. Israfil is left. And me, your weak servant. Allah Azza wa Jal is going to order Malak al Maut to go and take the soul of Mikael. When he goes there, he finds Mikael waiting for clouds to load drops of rain because Mikael is that angel that is in charge of charging rain to the clouds. This is what we believe. We disbelieve in science if science says rather than this. Mikael is the angel that Allah Azza wa Jal has created him for one purpose, to load the drops of rain in the clouds. So when Malak al Maut goes to, his, to Mikael, he's going to tell him, Ya Miskin, what made you be distracted from this moment? Can't you see that everything has died? When Mikael hears to what he has to say, he's going to beg Allah Azza wa Jal to make the stopper of death easy on him. So Malak al Maut is going to embrace him and his body is going to fall down lifeless. So Allah Azza wa Jal will ask Malak al Maut, Ya Malak al Maut, man baqi? O angel of death, 
Who's left? The angel of death is going to say, Ya Sayyidi wa Mawlai, you are the all-knowing. It's left Israfil and your weak servant, Malak al-Mawt. Israfil is that angel that Allah Azza wa Jal has created him to blow on the horn. And in some narrations, in some athar, it is narrated that he is extremely big. And since the day that Allah Azza wa Jal put him in charge of blowing the horn, he has never blinked his eyes waiting for Allah's commandment to blow on the horn. He doesn't want to be distracted on that day. That's why he, he is not, he hasn't blink his eyes since that day. So the angel of death, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to order the angel of death to go and take Israfil's soul. And when the angel of death goes to him, he tells him, Ya Miskin, what made you be distracted from this day? Everything has died. So Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered me to take your soul. When Israfil will listen to this, he will cry. And he is going to invoke Allah Azza wa Jal to make the pain of death easy on him. So Malak al Maut is going to embrace him and his body is going to fall down lifeless. If the dwellers of heavens and earth If the dwellers of heavens and earth are going to be, will be alive on that day, the impact that his body is going to cause is going to make them die. So Allah Azza wa Jal is going to ask the angel of death, Ya Malak al Maut, man baqi? O angel of death, who's left? So the angel of death is going to respond. It's left only me, Ya Allah, your weak servant. Allah Azza wa Jal is going to say, وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لَأُذِيقَنَّكَ الْمَوْتِ By my might and my majesty, I am going to make you taste death. Allah is going to make the angel of death taste death. The same way Allah Azza wa Jal made the other creatures taste death and is going to order Malak al Maut to go between paradise and hellfire and take his own soul. So the angel of death is going to go at the place that Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered him to go and he is going to take his own soul. And he is going to produce a sound, a shout, that if the creatures were still alive, they would have immediately died. So, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to ask this world, Ya dunya, Aina ashjaruki, wa aina anharuki. O oh world, where are your trees? Where are your rivers? Where are your buildings? Aina al muluk wa abna al muluk. Where are the kings and the sons of the kings? Aina al jababira wa abna al jababira. Where are the oppressors and the sons of the oppressors? This is what Allah Azza wa Jal is going to ask that day. No one will respond. Allah Azza wa Jal will say, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ To whom belongs the power, the dominant, the supremacy on this day. 
no one will speak. And Allah Azza wa Jal will say, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar. The whole dominion is to Allah, the one, the prevailing. Ibad Allah, inna ahsan al-kalam wa ablag al-nizam. Kalam Allah al-Malik al-Aziz al-Allah. كما قال تبارك وتعالى في في الكلام فإذا قرئ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون الحمد لله حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وعظيم سلطانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الداعي إلى رضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Ibad Allah, we mention these narrations so we can get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal by doing whatever He has ordered us to do and escaping, refraining from whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has ordered us to refrain from. We all should, should deeply believe and acknowledge that since Allah Azza wa Jal is going to cause these noble angels to taste the agony of death, to die and then to be resurrected, then we will all taste the same. But what will be the situation of the mankind in that day? It was narrated, it was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet sallallahu has said in the narration of Anas ibn Malik, the mankind in the day of judgment are going to surge into one another like the waves. That day is so severe that even the nursing mother is going to be distracted from the child that she was nursing. Every pregnant woman will abort her pregnancy. That day is so severe that the young child is going, is going to be an old man because of what he will see in that day. People in that day will be in groups and a caller will call, let everyone follow whatever they have worshipped in this world. Those who have worshipped the sun will follow the sun and they all will be thrown in the hell fire. And those who have worshipped the moon will follow the moon and they will all be thrown in the hell fire. Those who have worshipped at Tawut, those who have worshipped the devils, they will follow the devils, the devils, and they are going to be thrown in the hellfire until three categories, three groups of people are going to be left in that day. The Muslims, the hypocrites, and the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab. So Allah Azza wa Jal in that day will call, will call the Jewish people to account and He will tell them, Ma kuntum ta'budun? What did you worship? They will, they will say, Qalu kunna na'budu Uzairan ibn Allah. 
they will say, oh, oh, oh God, we worship Uzair, the son of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal will tell them, كَذَبْتُمْ مَا تَخَلَ, ما تخل اللَّهُ مِنْ صَاحِبَةٍ وَلَا وَلَدٍ Allah Azza wa Jal, He is not in need of a wife or son. Doesn't befit him to have a wife or son. Our Lord is not in need of having wife or a wife or offsprings. Then he will ask them, what are you in need of right now? They will say, we are thirsty. Quench our thirst, O Lord. Then they will brought to the edge, to the edge of the hellfire and it will be said, Go and quench your thirst in the hellfire, and they will be thrown there. And then the Christians will be called to account, so they will be asked, Ma kuntum ta'budun? What did you worship? They will say, Kunna na'budu Isa ibn Allah. We worship Isa, Jesus. The son of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal will tell them, Kazabtum. You have lied. Allah Azza wa Jal is not in need of a wife or offspring. And Allah is going to ask them, What are you in need of right now? They will say, Quench our thirst, O oh, oh Lord. So they will be brought to the edge of the hellfire. And it will, it will be told them, go and quench your thirst in hellfire. And they will be thrown in the hellfire. Brothers, these are not my words. I'm not trying to preach hatred. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal has taught the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is what each and every one of us must believe. On that day, the believers will be given nur. They will be given light. Light is a necessity on, this, on that day. Because you need light to, to see where are you going. You need to walk over a sirat, over the bridge, that it will be laid over the hellfire. So the Muslims will be given light, and the hypocrites are going to be given light. But this light will diminish from the hypocrites right at the most critical moment when they are about to cross the bridge. And they will be thrown in the hellfire. In that day, people are going to go to their father, Adam alayhi salam, and they are going to tell him, intercede with us, intercede for us with your Lord. So Adam alayhi salam is going to tell them, I'm not fit for that. Go to Ibrahim, فَإِنَّهُ خَلِيلُ Rahman. Go to Ibrahim because he is the close friend of the most merciful. So they will go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. We will go to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And we will tell him, Ya Khalil Allah, Ya Khalil Allah, intercede for us with your Lord. Ibrahim alayhi salam is going to say, I am not fit for that. Go to Musa, فَإِنَّهُ كَلِيمُ Allah. Go to Musa, because he is the one who Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to him directly. We will go to Musa alayhi salam. And Musa will tell us, I am not fit for that. Go to Isa, because he is a soul created by, by Allah Azza wa Jal. 
So we will all go to Isa alayhi salam and he will say, I am not fit for that. Go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Go to him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we will all go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam will say, Ana laha, Ana laha. I am fit for that. Allah Azza wa Jal has made me fit for that and has granted me the position to be fit for that. There is a day where all the prophets are going to say, Allahumma sallim sallim. Oh Allah, grant safety. The prophets are going to say, Oh Allah, grant safety. Oh Allah, save us from the punishment of the Day of Judgment. The only one who will say Ana is our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will prostrate under the Arsh, under the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he will praise him with praises he didn't know in this world. Until Allah Azza wa Jal grants him permission for intercession. O servants of Allah, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will intercede on the Day of Judgment for those who loved him. He will intercede for those who put his word over their desires. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those who love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make us from those who will be granted intercession on that day. Ibad Allah, Inna Allah amarakum bi salatu wa salami ala nabiyyi faqal Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allah has ordered you to send peace and blessings on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah said in the Quran, Allah and His angels send peace and blessings on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All you who have believed, send peace and blessings on him. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-alameen innaka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fi al-alameen innaka hamidun majid ibad Allah inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'irukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon wa adhkuru Allah al-jaleel yadhkurkum wa ashkuruhu ala ni'amihi yazidkum ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون